The resources God gives us is for enlargement. But there are three ways of handling it. The first way of handling your resources is to save them. Savings are good, but they are the least dealings you have with your resources. The second way to handle your resources is through investment. A man who invests is superior to a man who saves. It's poor people that save. Wealthy people invest. They are master investors because they know what to do with what they have to double it, to triple it. And so every time they seek enlargement, they go into investments. But there is another realm superior to investment. It's called sacrifice. In addition to investment, add sacrifice. When God wanted to enlarge Abraham, what did he do? He taught him sacrifice. Abraham was a businessman, but God told him investment is not enough. In Genesis 22 from verse 5, in fact, from verse 1, he told him to offer his son Isaac. And Abraham went, in verse 5, to the mountains of Moriah and offered him. In verse 16, God shows up and said, now I know that you fear me. And God began to swear by himself. In blessings, I will bless you. You will be the father of many nations. He took sacrifice to engender it. And in Genesis 24, verse 1, the Bible said, Abraham was old, well stricken in age. He said, the Lord has blessed him in all things. Have you seen some of the wealthiest billionaires in the world? They are the craziest givers. Make no mistakes about it. Giving is not a church doctrine. It's a universal law for enlargement. It was, it was Noah that taught us that principle when he offered to God. Go and check. The biggest givers to Africa, they are the billionaires of the world that you think are just making money because they are intelligent. I read about Warren Buffett the other time. He said he will not burden his children with the yoke of his wealth. He said, if they want to be wealthy, they will build intelligence to create wealth. He said, when he retires, 80% of his wealth will be given for charity. As I'm talking to you now, most of these people, millions of dollars is what they give for either poverty alleviation, health improvement, millions of dollars every year. And they are consistent with it. But a poor man, the little he has, he said they want to take it from him. Even when you try to help his faith and teach him giving, he will say, no, all these people, you will not get my one kobo today. That's why you are left with kobos. Who needs your one kobo? And then you find the wealthy. If there is a need in church, even before you preach, they identify it and give. Pastor, we see that the ACs are not working well. Please, in case you have a plan towards it, take this. And then you don't know why they are growing. You say, ah, these people, one day God, God will lift us too. Who lift what? People give their way into greatness. They give their way. As a youth copper, God told me, if you eat that alawi, you are finished. My friends were saving, and that's good. At least you will learn the discipline of saving. But God was taking me to a future I couldn't buy. And I had to seed out all my allowance. As a youth copper, I came back. I had scholarship. God said, go nowhere. Give up that. I taught in the secondary school for six years. Earning 25,000. Even that 25,000, God won't let me spend it. He said, give it. And today, you sit in your house. Somebody drives a Mercedes May badge and say, man of God, take. And another person looks at you and say, oh boy, wait till they do. You think things just happen. You can buy the future by your sacrifices today. The law of nature respects it. The laws of God respects it. And if you want to be great in this life and walk in unlimited expansion, you must make giving your lifestyle. Don't let anybody preach you to give. Give because the Holy Ghost led you, because you are mature. And when you see a need, you take responsibility. That maturity is why God will give you the burdens of nations. So you give your way into enlargement. I want to pray for you this morning. The things that keep men small will not see you. The wisdom that the mighty tapped that made them become great, so great that their generation can't resist them. I decree by the Spirit of God, you will walk into that wisdom today. I don't know what limitations you suffer. Some of them are even hereditary. 
they were passed into you through your bloodline. The DNA of your fathers. The DNA of your ancestors. Cripples destiny. Either through iniquity or through perversion or through stinginess. Whatever it is that smuggled its way into your system this morning will come by a superior law. And I decree that by the Holy Ghost and the name of Jesus, all of those bloodline limitations are cancelled in the name of Jesus. I speak over you this morning. Every blinding force that truncates visions by the spirit of the living God, they are pushed out, deleted, and cut off your system. From today, your eyes will begin to see mighty things. Your eyes will begin to see visions. Visions bigger than your nation. Visions that have global impact. By all means, step into enlargement. I decree enlargement in your physical life. I decree enlargement in your soulish life. I decree enlargement in your spiritual life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Every law that negates enlargement and keeps men small. I bring you into a superior law. Just as gravity cannot stop aerodynamics, from this day forward, no law that limits will stop you from expansion. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and every mindset that cripples, there's a mindset in Africa that young men can prosper, that women cannot prosper, that a man's biggest prosperity is to serve, not to lead. I stand against every African limited mindset that has troubled you and truncated your destiny. They are cut off your mind this day. They are cut off your mind this morning. In the name of Jesus, women prosper. Young people prosper. We don't fail because we are Africans. We fail because of a negative mindset. And so I decree now, receive a global mindset this morning. And so go forward and prosper. Step into enlargement. Become bigger than everybody in your bloodline. May the Lord make your name great. May the Lord exalt your horn like the horn of the unicorn. May the Lord exalt your sight and cause you to see beyond the Abrahams. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Nobody is small. The Bible said we were all created in the image and the likeness of God. Every man's size is a product of his estimation. And so right now, I recalibrate your estimation of yourself. You will no longer see yourself after the order of your bloodline. You will no longer see yourself after the order of a Nigerian. You will no longer see yourself after the order of an African. You will no longer see yourself after the order of the limitation of your gender. I decree now, see yourself as an ambassador of heaven. See yourself as one functioning in the God class. And so anything good enough for God is good enough for you. Because as he is, so are you in this world. And anything not good enough for God is not good enough for you. I break the powers of mediocrity. I break the powers of redundancy. I break the powers of low self-esteem. I decree now, step into the God kind. 